This is the Four Wheel Parts Down and Dirty Show Off-Road Edition, powered by Polaris Razor. We're taking it back to the roots, getting dirty and covering all things off-road. Because pavement, well, that's for <laughs> It's gloves off, in your face, on the edge, and the way off-road should be. We're your definitive source for all things dirt. 4WP is more than a store. We're truck and Jeep experts and have been for over 50 years. From wheel and tire upgrades to full custom builds, 4WP has you covered. Whether you want to order the best parts online or shop in store, do the work yourself or get it done by a pro, all roads lead to 4WP. Do your rig right. Shop online or find your store at 4WP.com. Welcome to this week's Foil Parts Down and Dirty Show Off-Road Edition, powered by Polaris Razor. We are coming at you from the SEMA show. That is right. I am actually back in the studio, but this one was recorded on site at SEMA 2019 in the Rigid Industries booth. And, uh, man, I got to tell you, it was a ton of fun. Had my Rigid Industries teammate and four-wheel parts teammate, R.J. Anderson, on the show, along with uh, my partner in crime, Tiffany Stone. Uh, also had uh, 4 by 4 Barbie, a.k.a. Pleasant Cook. Had some Overlanders, Rock Crawlers. I don't know. It was a badass show. We had one hell of a good time there at the Rigid Industries booth. So, uh, yeah, I think you guys are going to enjoy that one. Uh, once again, I am Jim Beaver. I'm the host here on the show, and uh, we are. We, it's going to be kind of a wild one today. We're going to run this thing uncut, super, super long. Uh, so we're going to jump to a commercial break, and then after that, it's going to be like an hour long of just all this rad commentary between a bunch of the athletes and uh, and things like that. So uh, give us a follow on social media at Jim Beaver 15 at Down and Dirty Show on Instagram. Also, make sure and hit us up on iTunes. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button over there on iTunes. Uh, please leave a rating or review. It definitely helps us out. And uh, with that, I think we are going to take a short break. And when we come back, man, it is wire to wire. We are going to be killing it. All killer, no filler. Right here on the Full Parts Down and Dirty Show Off-Road Edition, powered by Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Anywhere is possible. It's more than just a slogan. Anywhere is possible with Jim General Tire's wide variety of tires for whatever it is that you drive. Whether you're looking for off-road capability balanced with impressive on-road performance or ultra-high performance offering all-season traction designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has what you need to get where you're going. General Tire, providing anywhere as possible with a down-and-dirty radio show since 2012. Do you race or are you a weekend warrior? Have you checked on the date on your helmet recently? Don't get caught off guard by using an outdated helmet. Impact Racing, the leader in motorsport safety, has new SA 2015 helmets to fit your budget. Whether you're looking for a helmet with a full carbon fiber shell to take you to victory at the Indy 500 or just looking for some helmets for a weekend at Glamis, Impact Racing has a helmet for you. Find out more information at impactraceproducts.com or on Facebook at Impact Safety. 
Super ATV is the industry leader in aftermarket UTV and ATV parts and accessories. Super ATV products are designed, engineered, tested, and manufactured right here by Super ATV. Whether you're looking to upgrade your suspension, get stronger axles, or you're looking for a new winch to get you out of a tough spot, Super ATV has what you're looking for. And since we know you're in a hurry, we offer fast, free shipping to the lower 48 states on all orders. Visit SuperATV.com now and get your UTV or ATV dialed in. All right, out here at SEMA 2019, we are out here Wednesday from the Rigid Industries booth. Jim Beaver, T-Stone, and RJ Anderson. I guess all three of us, Rigid Industries ambassadors. But uh, I don't know, beforehand, RJ's already cracking liners, got T-Stone snorting, so... <laughs> I don't know, First light of the day got her, so yeah. and, and you are you are winning at yeah. life today, yeah. RJ. Exactly, <laughs> chalk that up for a win for RJ. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh man, I know you. How's SEMA been treating you already, dude? Man, SEMA's a just a beast of a show. You know, it's so overwhelming. Everyone asks me that it doesn't get a chance to come here. It's like, how's SEMA? Just so overwhelming. Everything you see, I mean, you see the coolest things you've ever seen in your life a hundred times a day. You know, it's there's so Good. many cool builds and. And uh, it's literally just overwhelming, hard to put into words. Yeah. Well, that's like we were talking about. I'm like, the thing that cracks me up is like me, and I know where you live, like yeah, I might see a Ferrari or Lambo once in a while. Here, it's like every time you go around a corner, oh, there's an exotic, there's an exotic. Like on any given day, like a Ferrari goes by, and you're like, oh, there goes a Ferrari. Yeah. Here at SEMA, it's like, eh, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> this is the only place in the world that you walk by a half-million-dollar car, and you're like, oh, there's a Ferrari. And like, oh, look at that next to it, you know, exactly. <laughs> the only place that a Ferrari is downgraded is here at SEMA Show. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I know um, you actually been working uh, on a, some pretty cool projects with Rigid that just kind of got released and stuff like that. And I know Brett from Rigid, he's going to chime in here in a second, dude. But what have you guys been working? Because I finally cats out of the bag on some stuff. The new Adapt E series, man. That was a that was a fun project I got to do with the Rigid boys. That was back in March. So uh, that just shows what what how much work they've been doing to this light and, and uh, just fine tuning it even from then. So rad! I when they when they asked me to come out and, and take my take my razor out and and what the new product was, I'm like, damn, that's insane! And when I actually got to drive with it, I'm like, this is the future, you know, the way the Adapt E Series works and the, the adjustable light beam. It's super impressive. And what I thought was the coolest thing, which which they haven't pushed a lot, is for UTVs, we don't have a whole lot of power. You yeah. know, we, we don't have alternators on the UTVs, and so these lights, we do radios, we do lights, we do whips, we add so many accessories that. We're really asking too much of, of the electrical side of these yeah. th these razors. And the Adapt knows how much power it's drawing. And when you are when you have all your other things turned on, it, su it tames down its power source and adjusts to how much power you have available. So that's one of the coolest things to yeah. me. No, and that's honestly, Brett and I were talking about that yesterday at Taco Tuesday. When, uh, but, uh, no, that's one thing that I think is crazy because, dude, like, we're for our race cars in the desert. We're, like, spending $2,500 on these billet alternator kits and, like, everything to get more juice. And it's like. Ridge has got the solution. Like, no, you can just keep doing what you're doing. We, we got the right lights. Like, I, I don't know. I think it's a game changer for UTVs. Yeah, for sure. I think that's that's going to set the standard for, for UTV lighting, for sure. Yeah. So uh, what's been going on? I know, obviously, wrapping up the Lucas Oil Series. I know, uh, you know, I, we didn't even talk. You're the, like the big, uh, you're like King of Cranon this year, man. That, how special was that, dude, walking yeah. away? You had the big wreath around your neck. I mean, it's funny because you've got a handful of guys. I look at Cranon, and it's like, yeah, we know, like, you've got a shot, Kyle degrees like but to put it all together on that cup race like keegan kincaid's another one you you know and i i love keegan to death but dude like it's so hard to put it together in that race because there's so much that can happen you know with cautions and just the way things work out like how stoked were you on that like there is i would say 15 heavy hitters that took off on the line that day that had a chance of winning that race to be honest you know and with all that happened and the chaos and the crash that i was involved in right before the finish line and one of the early laps with bryce is it's just like so many emotions in one race and to win the 50th anniversary. I was telling someone early in the show, like, I don't know, when's the next time there's going to be a short course race that big, you know, any kind of race that big. Cranon 50th, Kid Rock was in <laughs> Cranon, you know. <laughs> Man, uh, it's it's literally still a couple months later, hard to put into words, and, and a huge win for me and my team, and uh, it was just cool. My whole family was there, Walker Evans was there, and it was just everything fell right into place for me, and it was definitely the biggest win of my career. Yeah, and that's one of those, like, I feel like even going into the cup race, you know, you can go into any given short course race and go, you know, I, I think we've got a really good shot to win this thing. You go into that cup race, you don't know. Uh, <laughs> like, all I mean, bets are off. Yeah, all bets are off. Yeah, yeah. Anything can happen. Yeah. Squirrel Fest yeah. can happen. Yeah. And it's like, dude, that's what I, that's one thing I think is just crazy. And yeah. it was just like the race came to you. And it was like it opened up and it was like, 
And you and Keegan had a hell of a battle, man. Yeah. And that was what was interesting. Keegan, I think he doesn't get enough credit for how, I mean, that guy's a hell of a driver to hold off you in a Pro 4 in that Pro 2M truck, man. That was crazy. Yeah, it came down to the last lap, you know. That's, and that's what the fans stuck out the day is to watch that cup race. And for it to come down to the last lap, I mean, obviously it's a guess, you know. The, the promoters are guessing how long it's going to take the Pro 4s to catch the Pro 2s, and they timed it perfect. I mean, we had some stuff not go our way. And when I got in that crash, I almost pulled off. I was almost like, hey, you know, I'm just going to not put all this time and, and go crash my truck for no reason. We've already, you know, the car not, not in the cards today. Uh, at that point, the Pro 2s were like 30 seconds, but when the track dries out and we were catching them six seconds a lap, we're like, holy cow. And then uh, last lap, the battle with Keegan. Um, that was probably the only bummer deal is, you know, that whole – that whole hillside in, in Cranon was cheering for the hometown boy, but it, it, was, it, was, it was definitely cool how, how pumped the fans still were to, to see the battle and to appreciate uh, yeah. the run we had. Uh, to Keegan's credit, he's got a cup win, though. Yeah, and I, 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 think I didn't he, feel bad at yeah, all. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, and uh, honestly, I guess if he's going to lose to anybody, it's got to yeah. be one of his buddies like yeah. you, right? Like, I guess it, it's like it's – you don't want – I don't know. You don't want to say you want to lose to anybody, but I guess you want it to be a friend if you do, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> and he was happy for me. That was that was really cool to share the podium with him because uh, in the spring, I came out to Cranon and did, did some testing, and they, they do a cup race in the spring as well. Yeah. The stakes aren't near as high, but they, they do a, a brush run uh, cup race in the spring, and Keegan won that, so I was out there, and, and he beat me, so we went and celebrated with him even though we were the losers, so it was cool <laughs> that it got reciprocated, and, and the roles were reversed yeah. for, for the um, fall run. You had that crazy move in the, the spring one, and I know I was like, holy crap, they put up a wall like a K-rail on that, out, that turn. <laughs> And uh, I know in the spring run, you did, like, it was full-on, like, freestyle pro fours or something. Dude. It was, like, full-on, like, 180 off the backside. I made my mark in Cran, and they put their only K-rolls up just for me. <laughs> so I looked. I'm like, are they, like, saying something to RJ yeah, here when exactly. we walked in? I was like, is this, like, the RJ Anderson wall? <laughs> yep, exactly. I got my own corner there in Cran, and, you know. Uh, yeah, just, you know, that's the thing is I'm glad I came back in the spring. I learned from that, you know. I We don't get any sight laps or anything in, in the Luke Soil series. We're used to kind of – at least when we stage, we do one lap around the track and kind of see what's going on. Well, in Cranon, we just unleash it all at once. Whole shot down in the big turn, turn one, and then uh, come wide open. I whole shot, pro four race, was leading. Came, the track was perfect. Came into the final hairpin turn, and it was slicker than snot. And I threw it in and straight reverse off the backside of the track, disappeared out of the crowd sight, and then popped back over. So it was spectacular. Uh, if the Carol was there... I think I could have probably stayed in the lead and, <laughs> and won that race. So I wish it was there in the in the in the spring run, but uh, it's pretty funny they put some K-roll up just for me. Yeah, no, <laughs> I showed up and I just started laughing. I'm like, they didn't yeah, have to say yeah, anything. Exactly. Everybody just knew. <laughs> I had so many people come up to me and be like, "Oh, did you see your K-roll up there in the, in the, in the tree turn?" I'm like, yeah, yeah, we saw that maybe one. Maybe sign that thing. <laughs> So what else going on for you, dude? I know you've been uh, doing some 6100 racing too, in Best in the Desert, and uh, what's uh, I don't know what, what are we looking at for the rest of this year? And then like 2020, you doing anything a thousand? Yeah, yeah, I got my feet wet um, with uh, Adam London in the 6100 this year, which was really cool. You guys had some uh, good runs, man. Yeah, I, I, we came right out of the box and got second at Parker. Um, just missed the win, and then had some good runs all season long. So I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, it's my kind of first desert experience. I've done some razor stuff with Craig Scanlon and. It's just a different beast, you know, and our, and our, the way you race a razor, you know, is, is way different to than the, the talent level and the trucks and everything that's happening at such a fast rate of speed, you know, and the, the short course guy is it was definitely a learning process, but it was cool to have some good runs, a couple podium finishes. We came down to the line, almost won the championship there, had a, had a bad race in Laughlin and it didn't go our way, but that's racing. Um, so, yeah, had some fun in the desert this year. Um, man, it's like, where did 2019 go? It's, you it's know, crazy. there's so many events now and uh, – yeah, so finishing the year strong. I'm I'm doing the ball 1000 with Brendan Gone actually. Um, oh, nice. And in the class one car, so that'll be fun. Um, have, you, have you got behind the wheels? That one got a sequential box. There's an auto like. Uh, the no, it's actually it's more of an it's an older it's an older class one car, so it's got an H pattern gearbox in okay. it still. So a uh, little tricky to drive, man. Those things beat you up. I don't know if you've ever driven a class yeah, one no, car, I have. but it's, like it's it's not as pleasant as I even a Razor. So no, I raced one one time. A guy goes, hey, I want you to race my class one mm -hmm. car with me. Do the first lap of Parker. It's your hometown race, and then I'll do the last two laps. I just want to do all three. And I'm like, all right, cool. And uh, I didn't get to test it anything. Literally, the first time I sat in the car was on the starting line at Parker. And, uh, dude, I got literally, like, into the first corner, and I went, oh, this isn't what I'm used to at all. And it was literally, like, trial by fire. It was – figuring out on the fly but you're right dude they beat you up and it's they handle so differently than anything it's i don't know yeah that's i think the men's class that's that's for the guys that just enjoy abusing themselves you know <laughs>
Well, no. I mean, there's no other nice way to put it. I mean, those things are harsh. You'd, you'd imagine uh, they're fast. You know, those things move. Uh, you get on the lake bed and stuff. It goes and goes 130 miles an hour, no problem. You get into the rough, and oh man, <laughs> you got a party on your hands right there in the class one car. So yeah, looking forward to the Baja 1000. You know, um, learning a little bit more in desert. I'll I'll be doing the start in the f about the first 250 miles. So okay. um, heading down basically from here. I'm gonna go down and start doing some pre-running. Um, then that, then we got Thanksgiving, and I got a couple uh, couple of film shoots planned throughout the year, so just kind of getting those all in order before 2020 is here before we know it. Yeah, so what's the plans for 2020? I know uh, Ronnie did KOH last year. You guys, obviously, I'm sure Desert, you'd like to put something mm -hmm. together, short course. Mm -hmm. I, I've heard rumors, maybe a Pro 2M engine in the truck next year. Yeah, so uh, the Pro 2M thing came along, which is just basically a little bit less horsepower Pro 2 motor. They're trying to save some costs. Um, so we're switching our, our big um, engine that we have. It's about just under 900 horsepower to the Pro 2M, and I think they're a little under 700, so we're definitely losing some horsepower there. But the DOT tires and a two-wheel drive truck, I don't know how much how much of that 900 horsepower you can ever really use, you know. So we're going to do, do some switches there. Um, we'll be back in Pro 4, Pro 2, obviously my brother with the, the UTV and, and Pro Light as well. So um, got some more desert stuff in the works, and uh, Really focusing on just some fun film projects that uh, don't have all the details lined up, but um, got some really cool things in the works. And uh, I think when we when we release them, people are going to be pretty stoked and, and turn some heads. Yeah, well, and I think that's one thing. Like I've really started like I think all of us race so much. It's like when we can go and like just invest time and just actually going out and riding or doing a little mm -hmm. film project where it's not necessarily tied to racing. Like I feel like stress levels a little bit less. I I don't know, like with you, when you do your projects, something in XP1K, there's a lot of stress there because oh, of the yeah. stuff you're doing. But like, I think sometimes it's like we really get to actually enjoy what we do even more. Yeah, no, for sure. And that's what it's all about. You know, that's why I love being a part of the UTV industry is, yeah, I get to go out and, and race Pro 4, which is one of the raddest, you know, forms of motorsport I think ever created. But I get to come back and, and hop in my Razor, throw some buddies in the passenger seat, go to Glamis and, and go have some fun, you know, and that's what I think. It's fun and, and refreshing to remember how we all started this, you know, and uh, that's going out and having fun, desert desert trips with your family and friends, and that's really what it's all about to me and and uh, and all the people I surround myself with, and I think that that portrays to the people, you know, they they want to they can relate to that. Not everyone can relate to go strapping in a, a 900 horsepower Pro 4 and throwing in turn one at Crandon, but they all go to Glamis with their family and friends and a razor, and they're like, man, what those guys are doing is rad. I, you know, I want to I want to go out there and, and have some fun. Well, I think that's like too. Like you go out to Glamis, you hit, you know, you hit a dune or something, and you s people see the video or the pictures. They're like, "Oh, I've hit that same one." So it's like they go out the next time, and it's like, "I think I can jump as far as R.J. Anderson." Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and that's what's cool about the UTV stuff is the people that actually have them. And then when we do some of our off-the-wall ideas, they're like, "How did you even? How did you pull that off?" You know, because they can relate. Yeah, because they so know how they've driven one. Yeah, exactly. They have one sitting in their garage, and they're like, "There's no way I'm doing that with my razor," you know. So. It's pretty funny get seeing the reactions and just uh, the end user enjoying what we're doing, and that's what it's all about. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You got anything for him, Tiff? Oh, no. All I wanted to ask RJ was if the mullet made him faster at Crandon because that's yeah. what I feel like. Every time I talk to him on the, on the podium, he just kept going from third to second to first, and he went full mullet, full sent it, and that's kind of what happened. Yeah, so a little backstory <laughs> on, the, on the helmet <laughs> mullet. Uh, as as always happens in Cran, we got a little bit of bad weather, and we were out just hanging in the pit having fun. And I started, uh, <laughs> as 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 why not? We brought a, a a hair trimmer kit from California with us to Wisconsin, and started giving some free mullets out to to friends and and fans and whoever really was down to have a mullet. <laughs> you're signed up, and and poor Chris from Temp Media, uh, <laughs> I think he got a little bit of liquid courage in him and was like, I'll get a mullet. So I literally cut his hair. He has super like shoulder length or not, if not more, long hair. Cut his hair off. And then taped his actual hair to the back of my helmet. So the deal was, <laughs> if I gave him a mullet, I had to get a mullet. But my hair is way too short <laughs> to have a mullet. So I taped his hair, as gross as it sounds, I taped his actual hair to the back of my helmet. And I had a mullet on the back of my helmet. And every time I'd get on the podium, yep, I kept this showing, is what showing Tiffany. And I was like, look at the mullet. It's, it's got <laughs> so it gives me superpowers. <laughs> And so I went from I got to three, two, one that weekend and uh, ended on top. And everyone was like, are you going to run the helmet mullet? Like, are you going to, like, invent that? Is that going to be on your helmet the rest of, of the season? And I'm like, you know what? It had such a good run. I had to pull it off. And I was, I, it's on my trophy. So my, my Crandon World Cup trophy, the mullet is taped to it. So my <laughs> my trophy has a mullet, and we'll never forget that moment for sure. Dude, that is rad. <laughs> That's all we talked about. Every time RJ came up there, it was just the mullet got a little longer, and a little bit more mullet went on the, the, the helmet. Yeah. So.
That's how we know I had a good joke this morning. Is I couldn't even get a, a snort out of Tiffany with a helmet more, but uh, open open yeah. the line with her this morning. Yeah, it was See? yeah. But I, I, we we keep trying to get the snort. Yeah. It's just it's not coming back. Like yeah, I know. we didn't get it on air. Like I don't know. Yeah. We gotta <laughs> wait for sleeveless Sundays. Yeah. Oh, I my I lost sleeves. That's I have scars on my finger from ripping so many sleeves off. <laughs> I will tell you what, so in Crandon. no, no joke. So those, so the the shirts they gave us at Crandon are those like Under Armour, like they were like seventy dollar polos, and they're that like golf material, dude. You can't rip that. Keegan, I don't ever want to get a fight with that guy, dude. He is full on farm boy beast, and I mean that. I love the guy to death. He's one of my dear friends. He walks up and he looks at me. He's like, Jimmy, you have sleeves. He grabbed that shirt and just went like he man style and ripped it, and I'm like. Dude, like, I couldn't even cut that with yeah, scissors no. and you ripped it with your bare hands. There's not much stopping that boy, yeah. <laughs> if, if, if we ever come, push comes to shove, you want to look around and make sure Keegan's behind your yeah. back for sure. Cause, uh, Especially if you've been to uh, the bar there yeah, and seen him yeah. punch the punching bag. It's like, I yeah, don't even think it registers his punches th because they're so hard. There's a local watering hole in, in Crandon called Group Therapy, and it's got <laughs> one of those punching bags, yeah, where the bag drops and you see who's got the highest score. I don't think anyone even plays because Keegan's hit it so many times. He's like broken the record that ev has ever been set on one of those. So <laughs> yeah. this thing just spins. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's crazy. Yep, I'm yep. like, <laughs> and we yep. mean that in the nicest oh, way. Yeah, like he's the yeah. nicest guy. But yeah, he is. Yeah, he's great family. So awesome, man. Well, I appreciate the time, RJ. I know you're busy bouncing around and stuff. Good luck at the thousand, and uh, sure we'll we'll chat soon, man. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, and so we are back here at the Rigid Industries booth at SEMA. We're just bouncing through things. My very, very good friend, Sam Rady, or Samantha. I don't know. I call you Sam. It's Samantha. Like, I don't know. It, it's Sam. It's Sam? Sam. It's a nickname, you know. I don't know. Like, I, I feel like, yeah, I've always, you've just been Sam to me, but then it's like professionally you're like Samantha Rady on your emails and stuff. I'm like, you're Sam. Yeah, definitely Sam. I get that. I'm Tiffany Stone, but then I just go by T-Stone. Yeah. yeah. So, so. You know. I, I actually, I got to ask, what's on your nails? Toyota Supra. Come on. Uh, How many okay. have you seen at the show? Like Speaking all oversaturated? It's, uh, it was either the Supra or the Gladiator or the Bronco. So. Yeah. Okay, you're right. Uh, the not many Broncos, but the overall like talk of the Bronco. Yeah. Yes. Correct. So yeah. Correct. I'm so very excited for the Bronco too. You should have done a Supra Gladiator Bronco, like a Supra front, a Gladiator middle, and the or the Bronco middle and a Gladiator rear end. That's interesting. <laughs> I'm, like I'm trying to picture it's it. Like a car Frankenstein. Yeah. Yeah. Like okay. Uh, okay, anyways, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> so those of you that don't know that are tuning in, Sam is with Car Throttle, uh, some of my favorite people in the auto industry. And uh, every event, you paint your nails uh, to match something around that event. So Sam came out when we had Pastrana and Star Car with me, and uh, she actually had her nails painted like the race car, which was phenomenal. So you change it up every event. I actually got called out on social media via her. So she posted something, and what should I do for SEMA? And I said, well, I might know a guy, and I had the little emoji with a hand up, and she, like, responds. She's like, I am not putting a guy on my nails or something <laughs> like that. And I'm like, not what I meant, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> and then I tried to convince Brad DeBerti to give me access to his truck before it was revealed, and he said no, no yeah. chance. So Shut down. Yeah, it's okay. Does Car <laughs> Throttle get shut down very often, though? On occasion. On occasion. Brad to Birdie, if you're listening, you shut her down. Yeah. He's not happy. Yeah. He better show me the trucks for next year before it yeah. happens. He's got to yeah. make up for it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I love how you're just this tiny little lady, and then she's like, sh he better make up for it. <laughs> she's ninja. Like, seriously, <laughs> I would not want to screw it. She's like full-on ninja. I'm half Asian, and I'm not a even a ninja. <laughs> no. I think Sam's ninja in disguise. Like, No, I actually get pictures. Like, she's got the raddest place in New York, like the most – Beautiful scenery at her place. Like, I don't know. I think you do ninja training up there. I do. Definitely. <laughs> right. Yeah. You can come visit. Yeah. I need to come visit. So, yeah. That being said, we are here at SEMA. What, what have you guys been up to? Because you're all over the place. Yeah. Um, my So, my crew is based in London, in the UK. Um, the big news is that we were actually just acquired by Dennis Publishing which is massive. Um, so we moved into their offices in the UK. I thankfully have not moved yet. Uh, I work in the US and I'm not moving to London. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but we've been really busy. We've been doing a number of like challenge videos um, out there in London, getting ready for the holidays and everything. So yeah. Um, it's crazy getting ready. The I feel like it's still summer. We're getting ready for the holidays. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. So I, I 
planning on going over for Christmas, should, so it should be nice. So, Christmas in the UK, huh? Yeah, it's so pretty. Nice. Regent Street, yeah, it's awesome. You so. staying with one of the car throttle guys? I, I, I was going to say, you're, get, you're no. going to be smart. Ha have you seen their houses? I, I've <laughs> made around Alex, and yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I don't know that I want to stay at his house. Like <laughs> no. <laughs> Am I missing out on something, guys? No, <laughs> it, Alex, I love Alex, but. He still doesn't have an ins Instagram verified either, does he? No, I don't think he does. No, I think it's funny. <laughs> yeah. If uh, mine ever gets verified before him, I am so sending him a text. Dude, he's going to be so mad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely. It's, it's just like a sore subject. Everybody at Car Throttle has a verified Instagram but Alex. Yeah. <laughs> he, you know he can, like, verify himself, right? All you have to don't do. Don't tell him. Oh, okay. <laughs> All you got to do, guys, is go <laughs> to the settings. You send in your, like, driver's license, and they see he's that, and then they like can verify it for you. He's got, like, 200,000 followers, and he's not verified. He's, like, this personality. It's it's just funny at this point. Yeah. Because he should, but I don't know. Does he really care, or is it, like, irk him that it I doesn't actually happen? Think it irks he, him. Yeah, it irks I think him? it really, yeah, it bothers him a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. You can go verify yourself now. <laughs> So yeah. uh, what's SEMA looking like for you? What's uh, What's been going on here? been busy. I haven't really been in the halls much, but I've seen everything in the parking lot. Um, there, there's definitely some interesting trucks and cars, and oh, my goodness. Uh, we found actually a massive Big Willie in the back parking lot that was so big they had blocks on the pedals. Yep. <laughs> I've seen it. It's the, the Army Green one. Yeah. They had it here last year as well. Yeah, I think it was a different one last it's year. Oh, a different one, but yeah. the same, yeah. the style, the same size. Yeah. And and for everyone listening, I'm five feet tall. <laughs> so me next to this massive, ginormous truck is just ridiculous. So. Yeah, no, you posted some pictures. <laughs> I thought it was great. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I've seen that's really excited me. Um, you guys said you had to, like, do a film project yesterday, right? Flying yeah. solo? Uh, I'm not solo. I no. have I have a videographer out here today. Um, okay. At yesterday and today, so thankfully last year I did it solo. Yeah, that's <laughs> why you're like I will not do that again. <laughs> now we're looking at the picture right now. It's huge. You're literally the, the tire the is almost as tall as you. <laughs> I literally think that from the bottom of your feet to maybe right like at your where your head and your neck meet, that's the size of the tire. <laughs> If you guys want to see the photo, it's on Instagram. My handle is S H R T Y R eight. So that's awesome. You used to have an R eight. <laughs> everyone asked me that. No, I've never asked yeah. you that. Yeah, everyone asked me that. They're like, "Do you have an R eight? I was like, "No, it's just a nickname. My last where name's Rady. But where does eight come from? I'm born in August. Ah, okay. so lucky number. So yeah. lucky number Rady, eight. R eight. R eight. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, it just with the whole car theme. <laughs> I, I think that's uh, yeah. Everyone has, but it was like a AOL screen name back in the nineties. That's <laughs> awesome! High five to that one. I don't Sweet. even think my, I I think what was yours? Honestly, I probably couldn't even tell you, and it probably was like my first street name with my animal and like probably like a five two for my birthday. I don't even know <laughs> or eighty five. Oh gosh, I just told everybody how old oh. I am. <laughs> Or 85, I have no idea. Jim, what was yours? Uh, that darn beaver. That darn <laughs> beaver. Do you want to know what mine that, is no, now? I, I still use that from time to time, yeah. Mine now, that like, so when you, I have a hot spot on my phone or when you connect to anything, mine is just the tiff, T-I-F-F. -F. <laughs> that's funny. So th that's what my. Oh, there goes my Subaru. That was, uh, like, we're sitting here in the booth, and I'm just like, oh, that's me. <laughs> like, legit, I went out and did a film project with him, and that's me driving my car. Oh, that's, that's so cool. awesome. When did you do that? Um, it was actually, there's, uh, so it's my Subaru WRX STI, the video's on the internet. Um, they, they actually, so there's this scenic road in Arizona up through this, this canyon run. Rigid came out, they put, they outfitted my car, and then it turns into a dirt road. We actually, they shut down like 20 miles of road for me. That's and so I went cool. to just literally took my Subaru through these mountain roads and I was just able to rail it. Um, they actually didn't put, uh, some of the cool like drifting stuff in the video because, I think because you just yeah, they couldn't for whatever legal, legal reasons, legal but reasons, yeah. you know, it was awesome. Like, how often do you get a car with a shut down mountain road? Never, Not. and I did. So, like, yeah, it was one of those. We it was a gag order deal for a while, but yeah, it was cool. It was just randomly I looked and I was like, oh yeah, that's me. Yeah. So we, yeah, we shot for a whole day out there. It was awesome. Most beautiful like road I've ever. And I d I'm from Arizona. I didn't even know it was there. That's awesome. So yeah, it was cool. So totally like digression there. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. I made it all about me. It's okay. 
Yeah. It's supposed uh, to be all about you, Sam. No, 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 it's fine. She's like, I'm usually on the other side. It's yeah. never about me. <laughs> it's never about me. I am. I'm usually not in front of the camera, so I'm yeah. behind the camera. Well, it's always so good to talk to you, especially yeah. being into this. But um, going forward, I know that you've obviously seen tons of cars throughout the SEMA show. We've seen the Supras, the Gladiators, the Broncos. What's one thing from any manufacturer, anything in particular, that you saw and you're like, this is what SEMA is supposed to be about. This is, uh, this is a SEMA vehicle. Because I saw a Kelderman truck with a welding kit all on the back in, really? in the bed of the truck, and I thought that was awesome. Maybe stumping me. Have I stumped Samantha? I'm trying to think. Let me think. I feel like you've I seen everything. I, then. I, I've seen a lot. <laughs> I, I think we're all numb though. Like literally, I walk through SEMA. I go to event. Like it takes a lot to get me excited. Yeah. I could just. I think, and I don't mean that bad, but I think with us in the auto industry, like we're just so yeah. immersed in it. It, like, it takes yeah. a lot. Oh. I did like Marvin's Jeepster though. Jeepster, yeah. Yeah, he he was really cool. His, uh, what is it? Seventy three. Like a co seventy three Comanche, right? Yeah, that's what he took. A commando, yeah, commando. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and oh, he ma Matt has the command cheap. Yeah, Sorry, so Matt. he t he took a commando and completely redid the entire vehicle. It doesn't look like a commando anymore, and it took him five years, yep. I think, to build it. Um, it was just really cool hearing this story and how much he loves like off-roading it and he did the trail to Seema with Tiffany and um, so we actually interviewed him uh, it'll be on Cards Models channels next week so awesome yeah that's cool I'm yeah. glad that I'm glad that you like that one yeah. it, it was really cool I guess maybe I was a little numb to that one because <laughs> I've seen him for 10 days wheeling exactly so. exactly so I think that was it awesome so what's uh, what's in store for you after the holidays like what do you what are your big plans for 2020? Oh man, I think I think my big plans for 2020 is really just getting um, some of my team over here for a l at least like a week to do like something like Alex and Ethan take America or something something funny and cheesy. I, um, I tried to get them out to King of the Hammers last year, didn't work, and I'm actually racing it this year, so maybe we can figure something out. You yeah. guys would love. That, like, literally fits car throttle to a T. Like, yeah. King of the Hammers, there's so much radness out there. Yeah. It's like eight races and, like, I don't know how many races. What is it? We got so many so many races, so, so many. So many, I mean, and, like, so many. It's days. like the most grueling off-road race on the planet. Like, yeah. so awesome. I'd love to have, like, yeah. So I think something like that, that we could do multiple um, storylines and whether it be on-road, off-road, you know. Yeah. I got the perfect one for you. We can start in Chicago, take the original Route 66 to King of the Hammers. I've done that tr trip twice. How long did it take you? Well, if you really actually do the true Route 66 and yeah. all the side roads, it's going to take you about two, two and a half weeks. But if you cut over and do some of the 40 and then, you know, check out certain things, I did it in about four days. I don't think they're allowed to stay here at least uh, for like two weeks straight. <laughs> they may. <laughs> Alex, the country doesn't want you. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think I can handle them also for two weeks straight. <laughs> I'll, start, Which is funny I'll because start speaking British. Yeah. Do you really pick up the accent? Oh my gosh. Like, I want to I wanna hear this. The proper, like I want to hear the Sam Rady oh. British accent. This is great. Uh, I so need to come to Goodwood <laughs> with you guys next year or something. Like, yeah, Goodwood's awesome. Yeah. Um, but they they say stuff like, "Oh, let's get a proper meal." <laughs> it's not that good, but the words they say. How about things like water claws and stuff? Do they actually say that? Or I don't. I've never heard them no? say. Okay, that. what do they talk the about? Loo. The loo. The loo. Okay. The loo. Um, you're not supposed to mention wearing pants because pants are underpants, not. Yep, and trousers, trousers. are your pants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I've, I've, I've accidentally said that before. I said, I don't have any pants on, and then they looked yeah, really weird like at <laughs> me. <laughs> 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 yeah, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, um, it's, it's good. It's good, definitely. Awesome. Well, Sam, it is always fun having you stop by. Yeah, and thank uh, you for having I me. I don't know, it seems like we only do this once a year. We need it more often. Definitely. So. I need to come out and, uh, Go off-roading with you. Yeah, we need to have, like, s Sam Rady car podcast or something like that. <laughs> you and I just talk <laughs> cars all the time. Well, we do. We have du we have WTF1 podcast, yeah. which is really cool because it's after each race. I F1 love race. that. They're funny. Eas yeah, they're really good. It's, it's just very comedic, but also, like, touching on the strategy of the F1 races. So I think it's good. But I don't know if I have time in my schedule to do a <laughs> podcast. <laughs> 
All right, Sam. Well, always fun catching up, and yeah. uh, I don't know. I'm sure we'll talk soon. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. All right. Well, we are uh, rolling. Just got done with Sam Rady from Car Throttle, one of my favorite people in the auto industry. And now another one of my favorites. We got Pleasant Cook swinging by. Hi, guys. What's up? So, uh, I don't know. I, I know we've talked about this, but I love it. Just going by Pleasant <laughs> Cook now. Dig oh it. Oh, yeah. My name is Pleasant Cook, everybody. Not go by for Barbie. Barbie's not my first name. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Sometimes I forget and I just call her Barbs. I'm oh, like it's like... Some people, I'm pretty sure that's the only name they know me by. Is Barb's. And even like with some of my close friends, it's like Barb's. I'm like, oh, hey. And I'm like, pleasant too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a whole deal. So, I know. I feel like we, I don't know. I see you at more events. It's like we crisscross. We'll be in the most <laughs> random spots. Her and I have this ongoing joke. Oh, are you stalking me? Oh, like literally, literally, we don't know we're going to be there. And it's like, oh, there's pleasant. You know? Yeah, I'll be sitting there. And I'm like, I hear the announcer. And I'm like, oh. That's Jim. I know him. I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> are you talking to me, Jim? Where, yeah, where I'm are like you looking from? around. I'm like, where is that coming from? I know he's here. That's how I feel. No, I've known Pleasant for what, like two and a half years, maybe three now? Oh, it's been a while because we did that one interview at the it, Joliet. In Joliet three yep. years ago. Um, that's kind of when I met Pleasant. And it's so cool to see you grow and see you get out of your mini monster truck and then go into a bigger truck, but then now go into <laughs> a Razor and you want to race side by side. So it's, it's really cool to see you kind of grow and, and – See where you're taking it to the next level. Oh, yeah. It's been an interesting journey for sure. Just, like, switching from, like, just complete driving mentalities as well. Just completely different. But it's been a fun fun couple years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like, you going into things, too. Like, you go in and you just want to learn. You know what I mean? It's like I think a lot of people come in and they're like, oh, I'm going to win everything. And you've, all, you've been like, you know what? I want to win at some point. But, like, I know I need to put in the work and I need to learn. And, like, you set yourself up. You know, I think a lot of people come in with an arrogance. And yeah. you – you don't. You know, you just come in very humble, and it's like, hey, let's just come in and figure this out. I always crack up because, like, I'm friends with all the winners, so I'm, like, over here, like, hey, I'm, like, I'm just here to have fun. Like, what's up, guys? I'm, like, I'll beat up there one day. Just wait. Just wait. <laughs> but, yeah. no, yeah, you're right. Just kind of want to learn my machine more than anything and just growing into this, going into it, like, with a clear mindset. Just, I don't know, hungry to learn. <laughs> that's yeah. that's great. I, I, I I have goosebumps, I think, a little bit just because most people never say that they're hungry to learn. And, and for me, for being successful, the definition of success is having something, having it all taken away. Not that your success has been taken away, but you've pivoted, went a different route, and you're kind of like, like you said, starting from the bottom again, building up, eager to learn. And to me, I, I don't know if that's for you, Jim, but I, I really think that people are very successful when they do that. Yeah, well, and I think uh, all of us like challenges, and one, well, one we like challenges, but two, I think we uh, within this industry, we have to continually reinvent ourselves and kind of evolve. And I know, like, oh, yeah. I've gone through that, went from a trophy truck to a UTV guy because I saw that was how the industry was shifting. You know, you've uh, done that from model to now spokesperson and driver yourself, and you know, you're you know totally always you know kind of morphing. And I think, like, I I think we have to, right? Oh, I'm like, as long as I'm driving and somehow I go in the air, <laughs> I'm happy. Like, whether I'm jumping a car or I'm just trying to jump another racer out on the court, I'm I'm pumped. I'm happy. <laughs> so I know you, you got uh, some builds here at SEMA. You've been, you're always cranking on the builds and things like that, right? You've oh always yeah. got, like, irons <laughs> in the fire. Oh, of course. It was insane this year. Um, between me and my boyfriend, we had three trucks coming out here. So literally the whole month before SEMA, it's been run, run, run. We went from, like, Iowa to Minnesota to Ohio, from Ohio back to Minnesota, back to Iowa, then straight here. So it's been it's been fun, but I, I love, I enjoy doing the truck stuff because it's fun to do the truck shows and just kind of hanging out. It's like a nice little, kind of like a break from the fast-paced world and stuff of racing, but I'm just trying to dabble in it all, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I know you did a big deal with our friends over there at High Lifter, too, recently, right? Yes, You're kind of a yes. brand ambassador <laughs> for High Lifter. Yeah, um, they helped me out with my razor. Uh, they're awesome people. I love Rachel and Scott. Uh, ended up, they had a big outlaw rally in Louisiana, invited me out. It was fun. We They actually had, like, a razor for us to drive over at um, the Booker Toxics, I think it's called. But um, they actually built a razor, had it there, and we, we drove it. We did a couple trails. We uh, tried our shot at it, so... Hopefully, I'll be kind of getting into that business, too, a little bit. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. That they've looks like a fun some, industry. They've got some insane builds that they do, like, for mudding and stuff. Oh, like it's yeah. I want to go, and they reached out to me, and uh, I was like, I want to go to the Mud Nationals next year. <laughs> like, I want to go. That looks oh, crazy. It's insane. It's so much fun. And then last year, it was sad we didn't get to go to Quadna, which is, like, right in our backyard now in Minnesota. But I think this year, we're going to try to go to, like, we're definitely going to the Arkansas one, Quad now. So if you guys want to come out, let me know. Can I, mean, I bring the Jeep? Oh, let's no, go. Let's like go. You're like done. Done, yeah. done deal. But you know I only have the three and a half inch lift. I feel like I need like a 10 inch lift to go mudding out there. Because oh. I see all these things and it's like Pleasant's, you know, 
way up high here <laughs> in this like razor and everything and I, I think that's I'm awesome. I'm not even gonna lie. The most fun I think we had at Mud Nats in Arkansas was in a stock Polaris razor, one thousand turbo, and we literally just went like we're just like zooming through all the trails and stuff. People were like looking at us. They drive pretty slow, it's a big one. So they're just like kind of looking at us like, what are you guys doing over there? We're just flying through, having fun, doing donuts in the background. It was great. <laughs> it was great. It she was said. She's like, wonderful. we were doing this and this and donuts, and it was great. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if you guys know me. I can't be slow paced. So, <laughs> but no, definitely. Jeep. Jeep. We're making a whole decision out of it. We're well, going. and then I can stay clean. Just roll up the windows. Just keep <laughs> the tops exactly. on. Keep the doors on. Don't have to worry about that. So you step that. out. Then <laughs> yeah, don't don't wear the white three stripes that you're wearing now. <laughs> I know. See, you got to be like me. I had just my Converse on, my jeans. I didn't get out of the car the entire time. I was like, you guys can do the hard work. I'm going to sit right here, not get muddy. But, no, nah, I'm going to try and get up with uh, Gator waiters and try to get me some waiters on for the next <laughs> my back. I'm going to be out there in the middle of the mud with all of them. <laughs> you're going to, like, do design your own Gator waiters, oh, though? Oh, we like should. We should look like a pink and camo ones or something. Be like, limited edition, 4x4 Barbie, Gator waiters. Hashtag oh, T-Stone approves. Yes. We'll get a little patch for it. Yeah, look at that. Look at you guys. She's going the cutest thing. thing. She's like, we're going to go mudding, and I'm going to get waiters. <laughs> I'm going back to my roots, guys. Could be a legit business roots. model, though. Like, I mean, are there any waiters that are actually geared towards women? I don't know. I mean, there's a couple, but it's very, like, slim pickings. It's kind of like, and plus, I mean, waiters aren't in the most flattering, like, outfits. It's like a fire suit. If you get, like, a one-size-fits-all fire suit kind of ordeal, like, we're, like, straight as a box. So. That's true. All right. Pleasant Cook, T-Stone, waiters coming through. Oh, yeah. It coming at you. Just wait, guys. Just wait. Sure. You know, we're going to do a big reveal on Instagram. A big reveal <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Build up the drama. Have, like, a countdown every day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> waiters only. Oh, yeah. We got a good name. We got to figure something waiters out. Waiters only? Is that, like, farmers only? <laughs> <spin off? laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I did not realize. Uh, you're like, waiters <laughs> only. I'm like, is that the that's full blown farmers <laughs> only spinoff? Like, you all only want dudes to hang out in the mud? Oh, we got the store. Oh, my. <laughs> RJ's going to be so upset about that. Where did RJ go? Oh, oh that oh, is gone, funny. Gone. He, he was now. upset he couldn't make me snort. Because you know, when I snort, it's like super funny. It has to be that. <laughs> well, totally real like, waiters too. only. Like I'm like, the waiters. I mean, it's like the same thing. You know, farmers, waiters, they go hand in hand. Uh, you know, it's a deal. Well, we go mud and get waiters this is like only. like back to my Missouri roots, guys. <laughs> like, man, I'm getting flashbacks of home. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop laughing. You can't stop laughing. I don't want to laugh because I'm going to snort. And RJ's going <laughs> to be so We just discovered one of T-Stone's turn-ons, waiters, dudes and waiters. Yes. <laughs> you want to oh, make oh, a Oh, we got oh. another one. Yeah, literally. Yeah, all all you listening in at home, you know how to get to T-Stone's heart. Just right wait until there. we do another high lifter event. She's going to be snorting all day. I know. It would be so be funny great. if you're out at an event, some dude walks up in waiters like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, oh. I'm going to vlog it. <laughs> be like, and that emoji with, like, the drool coming up. The, uh. Yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We've gone it's down. It's got to happen. It's just gotta definitely going to happen. <laughs> So what's up next for you? I obviously we got trade shows going on. Are you going? You got anything at PRI or no? Um, I don't. Know, I don't have anything in the booth, but I'm probably gonna go out there and hang out and stuff like that. Uh, honestly, I haven't really even thought about what I'm doing next. Just seeing what's been so insane lately. I'm like, crazy. I'm just gonna try to go vacation a little bit. Like I'm gonna go sit and not move for like a couple days. <laughs> Inner waiters. In my waiters, you know. Your feet fill right you like the end of the day. You're just like. Oh over man, it. it's insane. Like I'm really short, so my tennis shoes have little wedges in them, so I'm like normal people height. So I'm like dying right now, to be honest, and I just got here. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't care, at SEMA, you can sit all day or you can stand, doesn't matter, your feet's gonna hurt. It's just, it comes with it. <laughs> no, that is truth, it just, I don't know, there's no way around it, your feet are gonna be wrecked oh, at yeah. the end of the week. Call it the SEMA first. Yeah. There's a couple SEMA firsts, that's one of them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What is there, these, uh, there's the meme always goes around, like, uh, no pun intended, but there's SEMA Barbie, yep. and it's like, Monday, <laughs> she's all nice, and by Friday, she's wrecked. Funny story. Waylon Campbell actually just sent me that meme, and he's like, this is you. And I'm like, oh, you ain't lying. You <laughs> ain't lying. <laughs> like, That's I awesome. agree completely. It would be funny if you posted it just because it would be <laughs> it would go viral. <laughs> <laughs> go viral again? Just yes. I should do, like, a real-life Barbie thing of that. Like, me, like, see my Barbie in the beginning, see my Barbie at the end, and just, like, hair everywhere or something. I have, like, a wrap stuck to my arm or something, like, sitting with tire grease and tire shine all over me. Actually, that was me the other day, not going to lie. <laughs> I got a good picture for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, yeah. man. All right. I don't know. We got anything else for Pleasant? No, because I can't snort anymore. <laughs> you can't snort? It's been too funny? It's been too funny. Cause uh. Pleasant, well, because we always hang out. It, it's always great to have, a, and I hate using this, like another female, but it's also great to have a person in this industry that gets it. She's got her trucks. She's got the diesels. I got the Jeeps, the off-roading. She has her Razor. I have the desert stuff. And it's really cool to always just chat with the person who gets it. And like oh we yeah. were talking yesterday, so not to mention we had you at that diesel event. Oh, the UCC. Yeah, so she came to like she came to one of my shows. Yes, I was, I was so That's proud. That's rad. Yeah. So, so well, the Jeeps might be getting diesel soon, so I might need a, a four by four B four, four by four B yeah. <laughs> four by four Barbie swap into some diesel Jeeps. Yes. So there we go. All right, and then I got to come out and like rock climb with you or something, yeah. like trail rides. It's a whole deal now. It's a whole deal. Yep. Done. That and then. Mud nuts afterwards. You're down for mud nuts. Right? Oh, no, or I'm not down utters. way down Waiters. for mud nuts. <laughs> oh, yes, for sure. We got to drag Sam Rady out to mud nuts. That would be awesome. Oh, she would like mud nuts. Mud nuts is great. Yeah. She's just she, smiling. She's just like, smiling. Yeah, yeah, she's okay. like, mud like, nationals? Yes, I'm in. She's like, everybody's <laughs> staring at me. What, am, what are y'all talking about <laughs> over there? <laughs> Sam just likes anything rad. You That's say, true. Sam, it's rad. She's like, yeah, if I'm there. Oh, I, I like you, Sam. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, uh -huh. that's same, same, girl. So, all right, Pleasant. Well, I appreciate the time, and uh, always fun catching up. Yep, y'all too. See you guys. Thank you. All <laughs> right. We are, uh, what are you, dumping French fries, T-Stone? Like no, Mike's pushing my French fries I towards me. I didn't know this was the lunch Sneak tray. Yeah, I was trying to snake <laughs> some. Like, it's a, yeah, you guys can snake like, some. I, mm. I think that was like full-on reflex. Like, you're not stealing my French fries. Like, full-on, like. <laughs> that is not T-Stone approved. Not no, T-Stone. Do not get in the way fries. of her and lunch. And yeah. snacks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So we got Dan and Mike here. Uh, give us the lowdown. Uh, obviously, Rev Kit. You guys are on trail to SEMA. Give us all uh, all the details. I know you guys were uh, unfortunately <laughs> had to wheel with her for a couple of weeks. Uh, two weeks, yeah. yeah. I know, like two weeks with her. That's horrible, right? Fortunately. No, Tiffany brings the energy all the yes. time. It's awesome. Yes. So RevKit.com, we've got uh, free build profiles for anybody. We've got thousands and thousands of Jeeps on there. But you can go in there, upload your photos, upload your videos. But more importantly, you get to list all the mods that you've done to it so you can keep track of it. Help uh, other people get inspired by getting figuring out what they've done to their rides, and uh, basically just a whole big community going on of uh, lots and lots of jeepers, lots of trucks. Need more cars moving into that industry as well, and I uh, would just love to get everyone signed up for free. Awesome! You guys get a, uh, well. You moving into cars? You mean like just car cars or everything like Raptor builds and things like that too? Or Raptor really, builds, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've got a few. There's a few sports cars, a few trucks on there. Um, it's just mostly marketed toward Jeeps, but the platform will hold anything. So if you've got your entire garage, as you got a Jeep, you got a truck, you got a car, like my garage, uh, <laughs> you can put all those on RevCat. Plus so four dirt bikes. Yeah, plus four <laughs> dirt bikes, yes. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I was like, oh, I got a Subaru, I got a Raptor, I got an Expedition, I've got, I don't know, too a many. A Razor, I you got, got a Star I got Car. five yeah. Razors. That's I mean, it bad. honestly <laughs> all started because we had too many toys as well. We need forgetting that. We were forgetting everything we've done to them, what we want to do, and so you get to have your wish list up there as well. Uh, lots of cool stuff just to help us uh, keep track of our hobbies. Yeah. Funny, it reminds me, like, uh, of, you know, I grew up, and it was like, you know, and Tiff and I have talked about it. Like, I was a magazine guy. Like, when I was in high school and stuff like that in the 90s, like, literally, it was like the monthly – off-road magazine came out like I, w I knew when they hit this thing and I was immediately buying it and you'd go and you'd open it up and there was all these build features you know it was like have a couple of pictures then it was a breakdown this mod done this mod done right, this mod right. and I feel like that's what you guys are doing just for the digital age you know yes. for all, you know so somebody like me that grew up in magazines like no this is we're doing the same things just in the yeah. digital form so kind of how it all started was uh, about four or five years ago I was really big into the Harley scene and I had a had a Harley Street Bob which is kind of your bigger sport bike and I was customizing it pretty pretty good, exhaust, um, you know, intake, all the exterior stuff. And I was showing Mike how I was approaching all these things, looking for inspiration, keeping a list of all the things I want to do, keeping my receipts, and it just got to be overwhelming. And we got to talking, and we're like, there's got to be a better way to do this. Yeah. You figured it out. So yeah. how did you get tied in with these guys? I want to... So I met RevKit, um, uh, we'll have Marvin on in just a little bit, and that's who Samantha was talking about. But, you know, Marvin did the Unlimited Off-Road Show, and that was in Georgia last year in December. And, you know, with HP Tuners and all that, they had me come down there to kind of hang out with them, see what it is. And then I met the RevKit guys, and it kind of just spiraled from there. And, you know, and it, what was so great about them and to be able to wheel with them is they also were – not necessarily new to, to jeeping because you guys aren't new, but you wanted to take the big risks, and, and that's what I really liked about them. And that's, you know, they, they put a social platform site for all of us so we can be able to go check out those things because everybody, you know, Jim, we all want to brag about what we have, and we always have this, and now we can just go, go check this. And they were just great bunch of guys, and so that's why I wanted to chit-chat with them for a little bit. 
So, all right. So you, I like it though. You so you guys, it's one of those you're going up. You're like, oh, here's the easy trail. Here's the hard one. We're going the hard way. Yes. Oh, yeah. Every time. Every, every time. time. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and they actually on the fallen. I'm sorry. I'm like so speaking so highly of you guys, yeah. but we did the last trail in Sand Hollow, the fallen, and there was this one part that no JK or new JL or anything has ever made it up. These two crazy ones decided, hey, we're going to do it. Dan was out of the and actually spotting. Mike was driving. They're like, we got this. We got this. And I've never seen. And they said, it, what, what did Val say? That no JK has ever made it through no there? No JK has never made it up there. But I would, we would not have been able to do anything without Super Val. So yeah, shout out to Super Val. Yeah. Shout trail out to Trail Hero. Hero. Yeah. Um, that was some serious spot, and we were super pumped. That's yeah. our new favorite place on earth. Absolutely. And don't forget before that when we broke our ring and pinion. So we were in, we were at uh, Big Bear. We were on John Bull Trail, and Mike was playing around some obstacles. Uh, we broke our front ring, ring, pin, ring and pinion in the front, and basically we had to go two days searching for this thing. And so we, we found, found the part, and then we got it installed. And the way that we broke the gear in was we took it straight up back door um, in, in uh, King <laughs> of the Hammers. There's us going backwards up a waterfall. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> There's a snappy yeah. sound there. Yeah, we might have loaded <laughs> up the front end a little bit too and, much. And they also realized that, you're, that gears don't go that way. We learned <laughs> something that day. We also learned a lot about uh, <laughs> shooting back down to Compton, where we had to drive around <laughs> L.A. and to find a 538 for a jail, which is not yes. stocked very heavily. It was the only store in uh, four wheel parts in the country that had it. So we shot down to Compton, drove around for four hours, had to get an install kit from a, from a gear shop, shot all the way back up to Big Bear. Uh, Came down to Johnson Valley, found a guy there, uh, Clint Ca Camp Rock Fabrication yes. in, in Johnson Valley, in Lucerne Valley there. Kicked ass, put the, put the front of the Jeep back together for us in a day. And we uh, warmed, up the, warmed up the gears uh, 30 miles on the highway, and then Dan jumped in the driver's seat and tried to send it right up back right door. Right up back door. <laughs> <laughs> tried valiant effort. <laughs> Here is that video of them trying to go up back door with, what, 10 miles on that new 30. gear? 30, 30 miles, miles on the yes. new gears. That's how you break it in. Yeah. Trial by fire. That's Trial right. by fire. It still works. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. So what's next for you guys? So the next thing for us in, uh, in RevKit is just taking things to the next level. You know, we have a lot of people that really like RevKit. They really like all the things that we're offering, but there's so much more that we want to do, um, like, like a mobile app, for instance. The mobile app's going to be right around the corner. And then just being able to track more information and have a conversation um, on RevKit. So that's kind of where we're trying to take things. So 2020 is going to be a big year for RevKit. Awesome. So uh, I don't know. You got anything left, T-Stone? I got, I got a couple things here. All right. So oh, I want to oh, no, talk. This is where yeah. the good stuff comes. All right. Did so you should I mute her <laughs> so she can? Yes, yes. <laughs> Let's cut, cut the mic. No. <laughs> Wheeling with Tiffany was super fun on this trip. Uh, we both have JLs. Ours is definitely a little bit of a different build. But it was super fun watching her get excited when she did something new. Uh, there was some eye leakage that kept <laughs> happening <laughs> when she got excited after clearing a new obstacle. But uh, it was pretty badass. So we were happy to be out there. We also did some drag racing out in the um, dry lake bed in Johnson Valley. I can't remember the final how that turned out. You were if you didn't beat us, we were right. We were right there. You definitely uh, your Jeep's a little lighter for sure. Yeah, we, we did the, a JL drag race. We had four of them. I have the the three six. You guys still have a three, three six. six. Yep. George, I still think has a three six. Mm -hmm. But then of course Light Bright comes in with a six four three ninety two Hemi swapped, and we're just like, okay, you're gonna try to beat us. But yeah, we, that wasn't the same race. That wasn't <laughs> the same race at all. So, but no, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jim, for letting no me problem. have some friends come time. on. Yeah. and just chit chat so yeah that's it all right cool it's rock all cool. right we got uh one i guess one guest left marvin uh, give us give us the details tiff just like rambled like you're involved in a whole bunch of stuff oh man. yeah yeah i've been doing this for a while my name is marvin stemmel i run a, a company called flex rocks and rollovers and uh, a marketing agency called zero to 60 media but they're kind of merging at the moment and kind of pulling on the same string. And yeah, Flex Rocks and Rollovers is a social media network, an influencer network, combined with a event series now that I'm rolling out called the 24 Hell and Back, where we take 10 hand-selected influencers and just badass off-road uh, personalities on a 24-hour trail ride through the hardest trails that we can find in certain areas. The last one was in Kentucky at the Red River Gorge. So uh, yeah, we powered 10, 10 hardcore build rigs through 24 hours of trail riding, day and night, nonstop, and only the hardest stuff. So it was it was quite That's an gnarly. adventure. I mean, That's it was crazy. It was absolutely insane. And yeah, since ever, ever since I'm on the road, it's been like, yeah, left the house September 20th, 
did the 24 Helen back, then drove to Oklahoma, ripped my whole Jeep apart, repainted the whole thing, powder coated it, improved it, and then did Trails of SEMA with Tiffany. And now we're here at SEMA. <laughs> so do you even know what your house looks like <laughs> anymore? No, 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 no. I don't think my wife doesn't recognize me anymore either. <laughs> yeah. It's been a while. And it's only... Locks are going to be changed. Yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> so, And after this, we're doing Sand Hollow for a week to actually really go have fun and play and not be all careful because the Jeep's going to SEMA. I can kind of forget about that then. And uh, that's been fo followed by Baja 1000. We got the honor to join BF Goodrich with their pit crew for the Baja 1000. So really looking forward to that one too. You got a lot of stuff <laughs> cranking. Like yeah. I'm like I didn't even know about the Baja thing. I thought yeah. I, I thought I was on the road a lot. I, it's no. nothing compared to him. No, no. Yeah. Well, either you, you it win. It <laughs> it's either our it's either our own events or we're attending all kinds of other fun stuff and living the Jeep life. Living the Jeep life. And how did you go down this rabbit hole of this Jeep life? Oh, this man. is crazy, man. Like it how'd is you a get crazy involved? Story. Uh, I moved from Germany to the United States uh, eight years ago coming from the music industry and um, yeah, started my own business in the off-road industry called Axel Off-Road. We did helmets, gear and apparel, safety gear for the off-road industry. Got to travel a lot because of that, saw the whole country, visited shows all over the country and then uh, started a business with my dad actually who moved here 10 years prior to me and we uh, created a uh, off-road trade show and expo called Unlimited Off-Road Show. And um, yeah, we, I did that for years and years and years and just recently got out of the team and now I'm starting or I'm pushing more of my own stuff and that is Flex Rocks and Rollovers now with all of its crazy features as in events and social media, influencer network. We're about to launch a website with a uh, retail store for uh, trail supplies, everything you need to go four-wheeling. And yeah, that's my, sh my story in a nutshell. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, a, a, that's, that's awesome. A whirlwind. That is a whirlwind. So, yeah, yeah Trail to SEMA, yeah, I mean, you have any gnarly stories from that? Oh, man. None, I mean, it was crazy. It was absolutely nuts. I mean, just driving a brand new rig. For me, like driving a brand new rig, we just rebuilt it and never got to tri test drive it or anything. We rolled it out of the shop on the trailer, head to Arizona, and then start four-wheeling it hard every single day. And, like, for me, the big highlight was Johnson Valley. I've been to King of the Hammers many times, but never had my own Jeep there. And just getting the opportunity with, you know, Rigid Light sponsoring the whole deal and lighting up the canyon for us at night and doing Chocolate Thunder all lit up at night. And, uh, yeah, I would say my the biggest highlight for me was probably uh, doing Backdoor, like, you know, with the SEMA Jeep that was just repainted <laughs> and has to look all nice for SEMA and talked myself into doing Backdoor at KOH and made it. So we, yeah. we actually cheered him on once, uh, yeah. and then he said no, and then they switched to another person, and then I was like, Holly, I think we could get Marvin to do it. Let's just cheer for Marvin. So you all, there's like 20 of us at back door when it's all lit up from rigid, and we're just like, Marvin, 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 and then he finally did it. Yeah, it was awesome. I, it, it hurt so bad to not do it because I, w I knew this is the perfect moment, you know, having it lit up at night and only our friends. I mean, that was the cool thing about Trails of SEMA was, we're all already connected. We're all already friends. Every single person that was on this trip, we hang like that's the people we wheel with, the people we connect with on a weekly basis. So it was like a big class reunion on a ten day wheeling trip. It was crazy. So yeah, I I had I had to get talked into it a little bit because I was like, ah, I can't mess this Jeep up before SEMA. They're gonna kill me if I roll it. Uh, but I could not r withstand. So I'm glad I did it, and it was a hell of a story. Jim definitely. probably has those stories, like, you yeah, know, I was like, ah. <laughs> no, it's your pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. It'll be like something, you know, that like you don't want to jump, and you're like, no, nah, and, you know, you got people around, and somebody jumps it. Oh, you can do it. You can do it. It's like you send it, and yeah. it's like, yeah, no, it's crazy. But, you know, it's funny because sometimes, you know, I've learned when you're around people, uh, sometimes it elevates what you do. You yeah. know, you become better because Absolutely. it makes you try stuff that you normally wouldn't try. Absolutely. And, like, that's that's my whole philosophy. I only surround myself with people that push me and that, you know, like, pull on the same string or even the spr string above mine. I mean, really, my co-driver, Andrew Bailey, like, he is my co-doc and, like, most of the stuff I do. And we always push each other every single time. Like, he convinces me to do things that I wouldn't <laughs> do by myself and the other way around. It's, it's awesome. That's how you grow on it, and that's what this is all about. The adrenaline that kicks in when you do something that you really shouldn't be doing, that's, that's why I live for this stuff. That's awesome. So, I don't know, you got anything before we let him go, Tiff? No, uh, thank you, Marvin, for coming on and, and going off of what Marvin says and, and you putting yourself around great people. I, I pushed myself a lot because I was around great people like Andrew spotting me up, Holly from Mischief Maker, you know, even 
Jeremy from Bleep and Jeep pushing me up and making me do these things. My hands are a little sweaty even thinking about it, but I also did Chocolate Thunder. I took the race line, which is, I guess, an easier line, but just doing Chocolate Thunder with Rigid Industries lighting everything up, that was a, a highlight of mine, too, yeah. because you don't have the 20,000 people yelling and screaming at you, like, hit it with your purse, go faster, you know? So yeah, it, the, it was cool. All the armchair quarterbacks. The armchair quarterbacks exactly. and the guys with their little RC cars being like, why can't she do it? It's like, you're playing with an RC car on yeah. the mountain right don't now. Don't even talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for thank Marvin for coming in. Thank you guys for having in. me. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, thank you. And, Tiff, I think this is us uh, wrapping up today. I guess we've got a couple of shows in the bank from uh, 2019 uh, – well, the Rigid Industries booth in SEMA, but uh, good times here. Lots of fun people. And uh, I don't know, you and I will be back to, I guess, the regular program next week, right? We will be back, so stay tuned, everybody. All right, thanks for tuning in, everybody. And uh, we'll see you back next week, back in the studio. Life is all about sound, the sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. For WP is more than a store. We're truck and Jeep experts and have been for over 50 years. From wheel and tire upgrades to full custom builds, 4WP has you covered. Whether you want to order the best parts online or shop in store, do the work yourself or get it done by a pro, all roads lead to 4WP. Do your rig right. Shop online or find your store at 4WP.com.